goodness, that's good evening. Amen. I want to make sure if you are studying with us tonight, I need you to check in. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Wonder Pilot. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Patricia Blackwell. Amen. I need more of you to check in. I'm waiting for you to check in because what I'm going to talk about tonight, amen, D, amen. I mentioned last week what I was going to talk about. You think that has anything to do with it tonight? Amen. I said I was going to talk about racism. We sent a, amen, we sent a call them all out. Amen. Hey, BB. Amen. Amen. Send a call them all out, warrior, letting everybody know that what we're going to talk about tonight, the elephant in the room is racism. And uh, amen. Hey, hey, Teresa and Tommy. Hey, LaCheryl. Amen. We're in for a bumper ride. There will be no refreshments served on this flight. <laughs> amen. Because the flight attendants have to stay, amen, in their seats. Amen. Amen. There'll be moving, no moving about in the cabin. Amen. Because, amen, the flight attendants for their safety. Amen. And for yours. Amen. All of, of the flight attendants. Amen. You ever been on a flight like that? Amen. They said all of the flight attendants. Amen. You been on a flight like that, Elder? Amen. What they say, uh, any of y'all ever been on a flight like that? Amen. All of you. Amen. Where well, they said that all of the flight attendants, nobody will be serving. We're not going to serve any peanuts tonight. Amen. <laughs> won't be any pretzels. Amen. Amen. We won't serve any Sprite or anything else. Hey, amen. Hey, Barbara Lee. Velvis, amen. Get other folk on the, on, on the study, y'all, because tonight they need to hear this. Amen. They need to hear this. By the way, on this study, on this study, Janet Faggy, good evening. On this study, uh, people have been saying, Kim, to me, they say, Pastor, amen. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, my pastor is not even talking about, uh, we, I haven't heard in a church a pastor talking about domestic violence. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Amen. Say, I haven't heard, amen, a pastor uh, talk about, uh, amen, sexual assault. And all of that. Amen. They say they haven't heard a pastor talk about that. That's unbelievable. Amen. And uh, so tonight, amen, we're going to really, as I said, and I'm going to say it again, be sure, amen, when you come in, amen, to the plane. Amen. As we're about to take off, be sure to take the, the first seat that's open because, amen, we're looking for a full passenger list today. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. We look, hey, Betty, boss lady, amen. We're looking for, amen. So we take your seat at the first available seat. Amen. As I said again, there will be no refreshments. Amen. No pretzels, no peanuts, no cookies. Amen. <laughs> Hey, Geraldine Williams, amen, served on this flight, you all, because tonight the elephant in the room, I'm telling you so that you won't be surprised, amen, the elephant in the room is racism, and I'm going to tell you the God, godly truth, amen, about racism. I'm going to give you scriptures, amen. I'm going to tell you about racism, and we're going to talk about it because that is the elephant in the room. Now, when we talk about the elephant in the room, before we go into prayer and everything else, when we go in and talk about the elephant in the room, we're talking about those subjects that we don't normally talk about, even in the precincts of the holy, in church. Isn't that something? Jesus, did Jesus, that, that's not even like Jesus, but in church, we don't even talk about these things. Amen. And we need to talk about them. We, we want everybody to tell us Amen. Uh, uh, some some uh, story about, uh, amen, uh, prosperity, that, that somehow God wants you to be rich as if God is petty like that. Amen. All that kind of business. Amen. You're already rich if you're in Christ. 
Amen. You're already rich. You're already wealthy. Amen. If you're in Christ, you are already wealthy. So I need you to, when you come on, check in. I don't need you hiding tonight. I need everybody who's on this flight to check in. Amen. So that I can know who is with us on tonight. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get it squared away. Amen. And, uh, Amen and uh, a amen, amen. Uh, uh, be sure. Uh, hey, okay. Deacon Chuck checked in. Oscar Suffin is watching for about twelve or thirteen times. <laughs> amen, amen. Super, don't you start pushing it. Amen. <laughs> hey, Nita Whitley. Amen. We're trying to get everybody on board, y'all. Just give us a few minutes. We're trying to get every. Hey, Sam. Amen, Big Sam. Amen. We're trying. Big Sam, we're trying to get everybody on board. Amen. Trying to get everybody on board. Amen. 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 Yeah. That, here's the rule tonight. Amen. If you tell me you're watching more than two times. <laughs> No, I'm just teasing you. Amen. I'm just teasing. Let's do our, let's do our, let's do our uh, 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 prayer. Amen. Lord, I thank you for the power of your word. Anoint your word tonight as a seed in my life. Anoint the sower, and I do believe that I will receive life-changing, destiny-accelerating revelation of you through your word by your spirit under your anointing. Lord, I ask you to transform me into a whole believer in Jesus' name. If I believe it, it is possible for me in Jesus' name. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. Let me make a couple of announcements. Uh, don't forget, amen, if you're part of the family, support the family. Amen. If you're part of the family... Amen. Hey, Murders. Amen. Support the family. Hey, Angelisa. Hey, Gloria Jones. Amen. Uh, don't have COVID amnesia when it comes to giving. Amen. Amen. If you're part of the family, support the family. You know what they've been saying, family? They've been saying, and people have called me, and I know I have some pastors on this call, uh, on this study tonight. And just, guess what's going on? Let me share with you what's going on is that they're saying, Martha, that, that pastor, and I'm glad about this. I'm glad we're going, we're going to make it, we're going to talk about it so that they can talk about it. We're going to put them in, put other pastors a, a, in a position, amen, to talk about this without fear, amen, because there are things we have to deal with, we have to talk about, and, and uh, I, I thank God we're praying, amen, for bereaved families, we're praying for Amen. Uh, still praying for uh, Pamela Redwine, Wayne Redwine, Joe Melvin, and Julene Jackson, uh, 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 Dr. and Chantel, and the family. Amen. And uh, and the uh, loss of uh, uh, Nick Red and and his son. Also, we are praying. Amen. For you, Faith. Amen. Faith Redwine, you are ever in our prayers. Amen. You're in our prayers. We're also praying for uh, the Wonder Pilot and Tiger. Uh, amen. Uh, Cortez, we're praying for them and their lost ones. Super, we're praying for you. Amen. Clarissa, we're praying for you. Kirk, we're praying for you and your family. Amen. In the, in your, in the loss that you all have experienced. And others who have. Amen. Uh, Teresa and Tommy and and uh, James Woods, Elder Riley Woods, Lawson Aunt, and others of you, amen, in the midst of everything, guess what? People are still leaving here. Amen, amen. And so we're praying and we're asking God, amen, to help. Amen. Last night, uh, uh, amen, the other night, Willie Wingfield uh, uh, passed. Amen. And uh, uh, we we'll, uh, want, uh, want someone from the family. Uh, Shadon, you know my number. Tell your family my number. Uh, rather than having them call the church. Amen. 
have them to call me or call Rochelle. Amen and hallelujah so that uh, we can talk to them before we talk to any funeral home. That's just protocol. Amen. So let's do that. Amen. Uh, we're praying for the family of Willie Wingfield, particularly uh, Shadon. Amen. And we're praying for that family. All right. Amen. Okay, we got enough on board so far. Watch this, y'all. Tonight, the elephant in the room is what? Racism. That's the elephant in the room. And, and, and uh, amen, I'm about to lose a whole lot. Amen. Oh, for this, friends, amen. This, amen, if you have jumped on this plane and you think that, you know what, it's going to be smooth sailing ahead, Amen, and that what's going to be served is lobster, uh, uh, amen, snow crab, a king crab, uh, 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 something like filet mignon, amen, uh, any hors d'oeuvres and all of that, you can forget it, amen. Tonight, amen, we're the, uh, the, the flight attendants have been asked to be seated, amen, because of turbulence. There would be no pretzels, uh, peanuts. Amen. Uh, chocolate chip cookies. Amen. Served on tonight. Amen. Amen. What's the little cookie they used to have when you were growing up? No, not, not the real cookies. Amen. Face cookies or something. Y'all remember that? Amen. Y'all don't remember that. Amen. They're back in my day. Don't worry about it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And hallelujah. All right, y'all. All right. Okay. Hey, Louise. Hey, Daryl. Okay, let's get to work. Amen. Racism. Uh, let me preface what I'm about to say, what I'm about to teach in this segment of our series. And our series is, watch this, the elephant in the room. And so let me preface what I'm about to teach in this segment of our series, I want you to hear me, by acknowledging that the church the body of Christ has a history of neglecting or mismanaging cultural issues. The church has a history of neglecting or mismanaging cultural issues. You know what? It's easy to tease somebody with the promise of a two-car garage and a home in Knob Hill. On Nob Hill, it's easy. It's easy to, to, to tease somebody by, by, by telling them, guess what? In the morning, guess what? Uh, you're going to receive a blessing. It's easy. That's cheap grace. That's gospel light. Did you hear me? That's gospel light. It's like listening to an easy, you ever heard of an easy listening station? They only play those real easy, the on the ear type uh, uh, songs. Amen. Amen. You know, they call me Mellow Yellow and all of those easy listening songs. Amen. Michelle, my bell, uh, all that. They, they, you know, all those old easy listening songs. Amen. And they play those songs and they're easy on the ear. That's why they call them easy listening songs. Amen. And the church has a history of, of playing, of churning out easy listening messages. Messages that don't challenge us. Messages that don't call us to commitment. Uh, messages that aren't even biblical. Amen. Amen. And so, so, and, 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 and so it's very, listen, the church has a, a history of neglecting or mismanaging cultural issues. We often conform or compromise. I'm talking about the church. We often conform or compromise or withdraw and isolate. But Jesus didn't shy away from uncomfortable topics. If you read your Bible, you will discover that Jesus did not shy away from uncomfortable topics, nor does the word of God shy away from uncomfortable topics. Nor did Jesus respond in hate. Instead, Jesus spoke to the culture with both clarity and compassion, and so should his followers. 
Amen. It, 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 listen, it is, it, it, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he went on to say to preach the gospel to, to really the, the, those who are underserved and those who are disadvantaged, those who are marginalized, the, 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 the last, the lost, the least, and the left out. That's who Jesus was concerned about. Listen, so, so let, me, let me start off by saying this. You ready for it? Here it goes. Amen. Here we go. Amen. Uh, uh, last uh, Wednesday night, following President Joe Biden's first address to Congress, South Carolina Republican Senator Tim Scott, Tim Scott gave a rebuttal to President Biden's address and defended, listen to this, this country's record on race. Now, Tim Scott, uh, the South Carolina Republican Center, Sen Senator, rather, is uh, a Negro. And, and, and he defended this country's record on race, telling America what she wanted to hear from the mouth of a colored person. Scott looked straight into the TV cameras and, and lied without blinking an eye, saying, listen to what he said, I'm quoting, hear me clearly, America is not a racist country. That's what he said, hear me clearly. These are his words, America is not a racist country, end quote. Listen, listen, what happened? The very next day on Thursday, April 29th, Vice President Kamala Harris, the first woman, first black person, and first Indian American in the role, looked straight into the TV cameras and lied without blinking an eye. Stayed in, and I'm quoting, First of all, no, I don't think America is a racist country, end quote. Now, now, that's Republican and Democrat. And these were both, and these are both people of color. Tim Scott and Kamala Harris. Listen to me carefully. You got to pay attention. Listen to me, Daryl. USA Today ran an article dated, I want you to hear this, Janet Faggett, ran an article dated April 29th, and it was updated on May 3rd with graphs. This is USA Today. Ran an article with graphs showing that America is indeed a racist country. The Chicago Tribune, Publish a column on April 29th titled, listen to this, Chicago, the Chicago Tribune, Tim Scott and Kamala Harris agree the U.S. isn't racist. That's not true and they know it, end quote. That's the title of the article. Let me share with you the column. Tim Scott and Kamala Harris agree the U.S. isn't racist. That's not true, and they know it, end quote. That's the title of the column that was published on April 29th in the Chicago Tribune. Listen to what the columnist, uh, Darlene Glanton, wrote. Listen to what, she's, what she wrote, and I'm quoting, in the Chicago Tribune. When discussing race, some politicians don't have the guts to tell the truth regardless of how liberal they are. For conservatives, conservatives such as Scott, however, is more comfortable to live in denial. It's much easier to pander to white America than speak honestly about the way most black people view this country. Harris's and Scott's, listen, listen, that, that, that Harris's and Scott's refusal to acknowledge that America is racist makes black 
people struggle to overcome racism harder. Most Americans, regardless of their race or ethnicity, know that we live in a racist country, end quote. Now that appeared, those are not my words. That appeared in the Chicago Tribune in an article by Darlene Glanton. Let me read it again. When discussing race, some politicians don't have the guts to tell the truth, regardless of how liberal they are. And then she goes on to say, listen what she said, most Americans, regardless of their race or ethnicity, know that we live in a racist country, end quote. Those are not my words. Those are, that was in the Chicago Tribune. Pastor Frederick Douglas Haynes III makes a statement in his book, Healing Our Broken Village. He makes a statement that might help us to wrap our minds around the seemingly insane statements made by both Harris and Scott. Pastor Haynes posits, and I'm quoting, yes, there is racism, but there's also blackism. Put that in the blank, blackism. Blackism, B-L-A-C-K-I-S-M, in the other blank, blackism, is when we find ourselves with persons who look like us, who are placed in power with the responsibility of looking out for us, but really they're put there to control us. Understand that we have black leaders who have been propped up by our enemies to control us, end quote. Amen. I told you it's going to be bumpy. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I need y'all to, y'all to, amen. I need y'all to talk back. Don't be just sitting there looking amazed. <laughs> amen. Amen. I want you to say that again. Listen to this. This is Pastor Frederick Douglas Haynes, uh, the third uh, of Friendship West in Dallas, Texas. He wrote a book called Healing Our Broken Village. And he says, yes. There is racism, but there's also, listen to this, blackism. Blackism is when we find ourselves with persons who look like us, who are placed in power with the responsibility of looking out for us, but really they are put there to control us. Understand that we have black leaders who have been propped up by our enemies to control us, end quote. Amen. Jesus said, right, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Dear, dear hearts, listen, I'm going to make it to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Both Tim Scott's and Kamala Harris's statements had more to do with political survival than with the truth. Oh, you don't like me. Listen, it had more. When Tim Scott stood there and said that America is not a racist country, when, when, when Vice President Kamala Harris says, I don't think America is a racist country, they did so out of a political survival. Don't you know if either one of them had said, that America is a racist country, they, their political future would have been DOA dead on arrival. I wish, I could tell, I wish somebody didn't mind hearing the truth tonight. Amen, 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 amen. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. That's, that's the truth. David M. Rubenstein. Uh, David M. Rubenstein fellow, pardon me, Rashawn Ray. Now, he's a David M. Rubenstein fellow, Rashawn Ray, in an article he wrote for the, listen to this, for the prestigious Brookings Institute. He wrote an article titled, and it's in the form of a question, is the United States a racist country? Listen, Rashawn Ray doesn't bite his tongue when he predicates, I want you to listen to him. And I'm quoting, black people who succeed 
often walk on pins and needles because they realize that their success and more so maintaining it is precarious. As a result, some black people aim to make white people feel comfortable. Many of us are mostly, mostly listen to this, socialized to do so. It is often a survival strategy for our lives uh, during police encounters or uh, uh, economic survival in boardrooms, end quote. Amen. Amen. I'm just, I'm just letting you know what, 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 what is out there, what, what is really being said. I'm letting you know what is really being said about racism. And, 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 and listen, you got to understand, that's why it's so important when we talk about voting. It's so important. Do you know, someone asked me a question, and they said, Dr. Bell, why haven't you run for office? And you know what my response is? I tell them I have not run for office because I don't want to make my opponent rich. That's the main reason. Because I know that if I ran for office, there are folk who would be throwing money at my opponent. They'll be going to the bank, mortgaging their houses. <laughs> Selling their cars, taking money out of their children's college trust funds in order to make sure that, the, that my opponent wins the election. Because you know what? We can't stand the truth. Amen. We rather embrace and cozy up to a lie than to face the truth. But watch this. If you, do, if you don't face it, you can't fix it. You need to hear me. If you can't face it, you can't fix it. You have to face it to fix it. Amen. One of the first things that they say in any kind of recovery program is, first of all, you have to admit the problem. You have to admit the problem. You can't start. Listen, as long as we dance around this issue, as long as we have a politician that, that Dr. Haynes talked about, blackism, those who are put in office to control us, as long as we have them downtown or in the state legislature or in the Congress, Put that to control us. And they stand up and listen, look at all the hoops they have to jump. Why, why has it li that they have to jump through? They have to jump through all those hoops. In other words, what, you know what they've been, what literally they, they, they've been said, told, listen, if you want us to be reelected, you, you need to stay, you need to stand up there and look that camera in the eye and tell those folks there's no such thing as racism. That racism doesn't exist. Come on, y'all. I need y'all to, y'all to, y'all. Come on, Bridget Washington and the, Betty. I need y'all to come on. Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. So, so, so in my introduction, I wanted to let us know. And the church needs to talk about this. Listen, I'm standing here. I'm standing here. I'm standing here. I'm standing here. Let me say, share something with those, to those of you who are unfamiliar with me. I have been president of the largest state convention in the world, I was elected. I was elected president. I won for one, I had an opponent. And my opponent was Anglo. And, and guess what? I was elected four to one, by margin of four to one. That convention at that time had 5,700. You're not listening to me. 5,700 churches in the Baptist General Convention of Texas. I was, I was elected president. Listen to me carefully. I served as chairman of the Tarrant County American Cancer Society. You can only serve two terms. I served both terms. Listen, my board was not overwhelmingly or even majority per, uh, persons of color. I, I, 
along with, along with your, uh, Pastor Yo Young Kim, uh, Eric Estrada, and H. Stephen Shoemaker. I co-founded what was called Tarrant Clergy for Inter-Ethnic Peace and Justice. And we had pastors in churches, not only Christian, but we had uh, 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 we had uh, 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 Jewish synagogues and rabbis and imams as members of Tarrant clergy, and I was the chairperson of it. So I'm standing here as a person who's very familiar with the glossary of race here in this country. I have spoken and I have preached and taught and taught at seminaries in different places across this country. I, 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 I have done religious emphasis weeks. I have, I, I, Berea College in Berea, Kentucky, uh, in uh, uh, Lexington, uh, uh, all across this country. I have stood in colleges and in, in, in chapels and in colleges and so forth. And listen to me carefully. So when I'm talking about race here, I'm not talking about someone who has not been engaged and don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Along with, along with Dr. Stacy Floyd Thomas and one Floyd, Dr. Warren Floyd Thomas and Dr. Susan Bond, I want you to hear this. I was one of the, one of, I, I taught the inaugural black church studies uh, class at Bright Divinity School, Texas Christian University. So I'm not standing here as someone who is unfamiliar with issues of race. So now, what is, what is racism? Aileen, here it is. What is racism? Before we really take an in-depth look at this issue of racism, I'm tempted to jump the gun, warrior, so to speak, and answer Rayshon Ray's question. You remember his question? Rayshon Ray asked the question, is the United States a racist country? And I'm tempted to answer him using the words of New York Times columnist Charles Blow. Charles Blow said, and I'm quoting, Eight of the ten presidents, United States presidents, personally enslaved Africans. Are you, wait, hold on, let me say it. Eight of the first ten, eight of the first ten U.S. presidents personally enslaved Africans. In 1856, the Chief Justice of the United States wrote in the infamous ruling on the Dred Scott case that black people, listen to this, had for more than a century before been regarded as beings of an inferior order and altogether unfit to associate with the white race either in social or political re relations and so far inferior that they had no rights which the white man was bound to respect, end quote. Did you hear that? Listen, I mean, listen, that, that, that Chief Justice of the United States wrote in the infamous ruling on the Dred Scott case, and, and this is a quote, this is, these are not my words, that black people had for more than a century before been regarded as being of an inferior order and altogether unfit to associate with the white race, either in social or political relations, and so far inferior that they had no rights, which the white man was bound to respect, end quote. And then, watch this. Blow adds something, and this is going to mess with you. You don't like me anyway. Uh, listen, I was looking, where, 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 all, where all the folk at? Listen. <laughs> Blow adds this. I'm quoting. Abraham Lincoln said during his famous debates against Stephen A. Douglas in 1858 that among white people and black ones, there must be the position of superior and inferior. And I, as much as any man, am in favor of the superior position being assigned to the white man. End quote, Abraham Lincoln. That's why I need to remind you, the reason, listen, I'm going to tell you who set us free. It sure enough wasn't Abraham Lincoln. 
It, it was not Abraham Lincoln. Listen, you know who set us free? It, it's the God revealed in Jesus Christ. That's who set us free. Let's just tell the truth. Let's just tell the truth. Listen, and so and so all of these folk. I'm listen. I, I know it's going to be. Listen, I want to challenge you. 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 Stay with what we're going to talk about. Listen carefully to what I'm saying because what I'm sharing with you. Listen. What I'm sharing you, what I'm going to share with you, and I have it in copies. And guess what? You, and many of you have your copy. You went to your email inbox and you have your copy. You need to hold on to this. You need to, and, and next time we come together, you need to bring your children. Amen. You need to bring your children so that your children can hear. Amen. And if I had to recommend, let me say, let me pause here. This is just a pause, giving you a chance to, uh, to catch your breath. Let me share with you. I want to recommend that you look at the four-part documentary, Exterminate All the Brutes. That is, that I did not direct that. I did not produce it. <laughs> so, so listen, you need to look at the four-part documentary, Exterminate All the Brutes. If you do that, then you'll be on the same page that, I, that, that we're on here tonight as we study this. But I don't want to jump ahead of myself, so let's deal with the question, what is racism? Let's deal with that. The Anti-Defamation League, the ADL, defines racism as the marginalization and our oppression of people, put people in that blank, of color, based on a socially constructed racial hierarchy that privileges white people, end of quote. Those, that's the, Ameri that's the Anti-Defamation League. It's the ADL. That's their definition of racism. Let me say that again. Racism, according to the ADL, is the marginalization and our oppression of people of color based on a socially constructed racial hierarchy that privileges white people, end quote. That's their definition. Now, Bettina Love writes in her August 24th, 2020 article in Education Week magazine. It's in Education Week magazine. And she writes an article, you know what the title of her article? There's nothing fragile about racism. There's nothing fragile about racism. And listen to what she says. I want you to hear this. And I'm quoting. Racism is violent. It's systematically, uh, uh, par pardon me, systemically kills, destroys, and diminishes the dreams and real lives uh, of black, brown, and indigenous people every day in the United States and has for centuries. Racism killed Breonna Taylor. Racism killed George Floyd. And racism is a major factor in determining who will live and die from COVID-19. The idea that whiteness is fragile or weak does not reflect the racial terror people of color have experienced in this country, end quote. Now, I'm talking about, listen, we're, I'm just sharing with you. I'm sharing with you the truth. And you need to hear the truth and receive the truth because I guarantee you, by the time we get through looking at this elephant in the room, you're going to be able... To, to whatever your race or ethnicity, you're not going to be ashamed anymore. You're not going to hate yourself. You see, because self-hatred out on our, on our board, uh, on our uh, big board out here in front of our church, it says, Lord, deliver us from COVID, racism, and self-hatred. And you're not going to hate yourself. Listen. By the time we finish this, you're not going to hate yourself. It's important that you get this. So when we talk about racism now, and watch this. 
Listen to me carefully. A person of color cannot be a racist. So listen, stop trying to defend yourself. When somebody says you're a racist, they, they don't even know what they're talking about. Because racism, to be a racist, you have to have power to subject and oppress. You have to have the power to do it. Now, now, now you, might, you, might, you might not like or you might be, be bigoted or something, but you cannot be a racist. Because you do not have the power. Listen, I'm going to share something with you. Because as we go through this study, I'm kind of trying to get you ready. Let me try to get you ready for something. We're going to talk about the racial caste system. We're going to talk about the racial, not class, caste, C-A-S-T-E. Get ready for it. The racial caste system in America. We're going to talk about the, ra the, the racial caste system. Listen, we're going to talk about the racial caste system, not only in this country, but in Australia. Not only in Australia, but in South Africa. We're going to talk about what they call apartheid is, is just the, listen, is the same thing. And there's a caste system, you see, that relegates people of color, you see, to a, a specific area in the life of this country. Amen and hallelujah. I wish, are y'all through talking back to me? Those of you who are studying with me online. <laughs> you see, because, watch this. This is liberating for us. We need to talk about this. So what does the Bible, what are Bible verses on racism? If you go to Galatians 3 and 28, Listen to what it says in Galatians 3 and 28. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. Nor is there male and free male, female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Where those love, those hearts and so forth. There you go. Listen. John 7 and 24. Jesus said, don't judge by appearances. Judge by what is right. John 7 24. Acts 17, 26, from one ancestor, God made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. Amen. Where did they find the remains of the earliest human? They found the remains in Africa. See, they need, you need to, anything I'm telling you, you can Google it. That's why I'm telling you where, I, where I'm getting my information from. You can Google it. You can go to the library, what have you. You can Google it. So listen to me carefully. And from one ancestor, where did they find? And as a matter of fact, they can guess what they did. Once they found the remains of that that black woman in Africa in Tanganyika, guess what they called her? Eve. That's what they designated her. Eve. Amen. How do they teach that in school? Do they teach that in school? Are our children learning that? Listen, if I stood here right now and I told you the truth about Jesus and told you that Jesus was an African, you know what? Folk will have a fit. But I'm just telling you the truth. Listen, what we call, look it up, look it up. What people, what people call the Middle East, listen, was Africa. It's just a horn of Africa. Listen to me carefully, Africa. If you go back, as a matter of fact, they didn't even start calling it the Middle East till around 1900. It, it, they weren't talking about it. it's part of Africa, Eurasia. Come on now. That was a, all of that is a result of this effort to, to just wipe out our history. To wipe out our history. And see, and what we got to do is that we are going to have to tell the truth. Thank you, Janet, fact, for saying you're with me. Listen, <laughs> we're going to have to tell the truth. And somebody is going to have to tell the truth. I ought to be able to tell the truth about Jesus without uh, being concerned uh, that somebody's feelings going to be hurt. That's crazy. 
ought to be able to tell people the truth, the unvarnished truth. Listen, the Bible lets us know that when Jesus, when, when, when Herod said, we're going to kill all of the, of the, of the males, the, 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 all the males, what, uh, two years and under, we're going to kill all of the males. Watch what the Bible said. Jesus' family went to Egypt. Where is Egypt? Africa. Amen. So we're going we're gonna to say, we're going to help the Aborigines in Australia. We're going to help people to know who they are. Look at what Acts 10, 34 and 35 says. And this is a good news translation. I want you to hear this. It said, Peter began to speak. I now realize that it is true that God treats everyone on the same basis. Those who fear him and do what is right are acceptable to him no matter what race they belong to. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Did you hear that? Acts 10, 34, 35, good news translation. I'm going to read it slower. Peter began to speak. I now realize that it is true that God treats everyone on the same basis. Those who fear him and do what is right are acceptable to him no matter what race they belong to. Then Romans 2 and 11, the New Revised Standard Version, for God shows no partiality. And I'm going to give you more every week we come together. Uh, the next time when we come together to study part two of this, of this study, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you some more information. I'm going, to quote, I'm going to quote sources. I'm going to tell you, hey, this is where you can go to. I'm going to give you the title of any article. I'm going to give you scripture because I want you to know, I want you to, we're going to look at this in a, a, a way that's going to reveal research and that we know what we're talking about. Listen, Warren, guess what we're going to do? We're going to make our argument based upon the truth. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you that, that you as a person of color, particularly if you're African American in this country, listen, we're going to tell you why do you think that, 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 that we're being targeted? Why, why do you think, why is that? Why, 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 well, let me ask you this. Why is it that when we say something that, that, that all of a sudden we are censored? Well, why is it that we can't just tell the truth? You see, so we're going to deal with that. Why is it that we can't, why, why is it that we have a hard time? And then why is it that we label people? We've been taught that. We've been taught to label anybody. I, I was talking, and, and there, was a, there was a Negro nearby, uh, uh, and, and the Negro said, you know, uh, 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 he's a pan-African nationalist. Uh, 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 somebody say, well, you know, uh, he's a militant. We have to, listen, we're so uncomfortable with the truth that we have to try to label someone. Why is that true? Why is it, why is it that, listen, those folk who stormed the Capitol on January 6th, listen, what, 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 why, why weren't they, why, what, what happened to them? Why weren't they condemned? The, the, the ones who incited the riot, uh, the insurrection, why weren't they condemned? Listen, Black Lives Matter had been there, and guess what? They were treated as if they were an invading arm, and they had, they were not, they didn't even charge the Capitol or anything like that. They respected the, the ground. Why is it that, 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 that uh, uh, those in, uh, uh, the, the, those in so-called law enforcement, why do they go out of that way? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you something that a police chief said, a black police chief who told the truth. I'm going to share with you next week what that black police chief said, and I'm going to tell you that black police chief's name, and I'm going to share with you what that black police chief says, and, you can, and then I'm going to tell you where I got it from, and you can read it. You can go read it and get the evidence yourself. Because I'm calling, I'm going to call names, I'm going to say it's in this article, that article, and then I'm, we're going to, and we're going to make sure we stay in the word of God. Amen. This is the first. I just want to kind of introduce it to you tonight.
Amen. But this is the first teaching. We got to deal with this elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room we're going to be studying is racism. Amen and hallelujah. I, I hope you receive this word. If you receive this word, I want you to put in the chat box, I receive it. I want you to put in that chat box. Amen. If you're here in the sanctuary and you receive this word, won't you shout, I receive it. Amen. 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 Because all we're trying to do is to make sure that our children and our youth, that they don't walk around here with a cloud hanging over their heads as if they are less than. Amen. I'm going to tell you what the Constitution says. I'm going to show you in the Constitution where it says that black folk is three-fifths of a person. I'm going to show you. I'm talking about in 2021 in the Constitution. I'm going to show you. Amen. And so we're going to deal with this thing. A amen and hallelujah. And we're going to see what the Word of God says about racism. Come on. Put your hands together. Give God glory. Amen. And hallelujah, Patricia Brooks Blackwell, H.B., uh, Dar Darren Perry. Hey, Darren. Amen. Aileen, Sammy Williams. Amen. Patricia. Amen. Oh, amen. Angelisa. Amen. Uh, Bridget says, I receive it. Amen. Kim, Barbie, I receive it. I want you to be able to hold your head up. Wonder Pilot, I want you to be able to hold your head up and be grateful for who God made you to be. Amen. Stop being ashamed of yourself. Amen. Velvet, I receive it. Peter Moore, hey, Peter, I receive it. Terry Williams, amen. Carla Perry, hey, Carla, amen, I receive it. Elaine Collins, I receive it. Amen. Betty Thompson, I receive it. Amen. Amen. I want you to be sure to do that. Amen. Don't forget, we're praying. Amen. For those who are sick among us, Wanda Holland, I know you're looking. Amen. To all of the mothers, amen. Happy Mother's Day to you. I know you're going to have an awesome, fantastic Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Let me get that word in early on a Wednesday. Happy Mother's Day to every, amen, mother. Amen and hallelujah. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we're so grateful to you for having blessed us. We thank you, God, for your keeping and for your protection. We thank you, God, for, for, for just watching over us, guiding us, leading us, sustaining us. We thank you for being our buckler and shield, for being our refuge and strength, the very present help in time of trouble. I pray your blessings. I pray your increase. I pray your encouragement, your wisdom in the lives of those who are studying tonight, whether they be virtually or studying with us virtually or in person. God, we just love you. We thank you for loving us so much that you gave your only begotten son. We thank you for the promise that because we believe in him, we will not perish, but have everlasting life. God, we thank you. We honor you. We acknowledge you in all our ways. And we thank you for making our path straight in Jesus' name. Amen and hallelujah. Thank God for you. Love you. I'll be seeing you. Amen. On Sunday morning, on Mother's Day, we're in for a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen and amen.